I've got the Kitako oil cooler uh, for the 2019 Monkey. And actually this is also for the Grom. They have a Monkey specific version that goes into um, the upper frame here and hangs down. But what I found is that it doesn't fit with the, the man in the box air intake. It uses the same mounting point. So hard racing first sent me the monkey version. I sent it back to them. They did a great job with the exchange. And I went with the Grom version instead that just co connects to the top tappet cover. So we're going to get this on the bike. This should be a pretty easy install. It's just a matter of replacing the top tappet cover. It also comes with a cooler bottom tappet cover uh, that has some cooling fins on it. I already have some neat tappet covers on the bike, but I may replace it with these black ones because I think it matches better with the black clutch cover from Kataka that we put on the bike already. The only challenge I'm afraid I'm going to face is how the oil lines route with the RS3 exhaust pipe so close here. So it looks like it's going to hit directly. We'll go ahead and get it mounted. I'm going to see what my options are. If maybe I can bend the banjo bolts a little bit to get them where I need them to go or if I'm going to need to find some other ones. But I'll go ahead and get the, the cooler itself mounted because I can connect it without actually running the oil lines first and then we'll uh, see what we need to do about actually running the lines to the oil ports here on the clutch cover. So let's do a brief unboxing of what the kit comes with. It has instructions for the installation, comes with a series of crush washers, uh, the two bolts for the cooler side and four of these oil ports. It also comes with a length of uh, tubing for the oil to traverse, oil line clamps, this is the mounting bracket. And I think this is just the hardware for getting the cooler onto the tappet cover. Here are the two tappet covers that it comes with. This is the one that goes on the top that actually holds the oil cooler. And you can see that it just mounts like a regular tappet cover and then it has uh, bolts here or holes here to mount uh, dismount assembly too. And then it also comes with a replacement tappet cover for the bottom that has these cooling fins uh, that I think I'll replace mine with as well. And finally, here's the oil cooler itself. This is the three row version. So starting with the bottom tappet cover first, these are both just eight millimeter bolts. You probably will have a little bit of oil leaking here, so be sure to put something underneath it. So inside the ta original tappet cover, there's a little uh, grommet here. You need to pull that out to put into the new tappet cover. So carefully remove that and place it into the new cover. And then go ahead and just reassemble. And then these get torqued down to 9 foot pounds or 108 inch pounds. And then the process is the same for the tappet cover on the top. So actually, now that I'm reading the instructions, it looks like I'm supposed to use the provided bolts instead of the factory bolts for the tappet covers. I noticed that there's actually a recessed portion in these and I, as I was about to screw this one down it looked like it was going to fit correctly. So I'm going to replace uh, these bottom bolts with the correct bolts but you're supposed to use these M6 by 15 bolts that are supplied in the kit. The mount has uh, four different holes so you have these rubber grommets and then these metal pieces go through the center of that to support the bolt. All right, finished. So mounting this is bolt, washer, then through this mount, then washer, and into the oil cooler. The instructions say these go to 12 newton meters, which is about the same as 9 foot pounds. Alright, so the cooler itself is now mounted. So this is where I was afraid I was going to have trouble. The uh, oil ports for the clutch cover here come out and if you look this direction pretty much comes straight into the exhaust so if it was a 90 degree bend going back this way um, it would be fine these are aluminum I don't know if there's things that I can bend I'm gonna see though if I can't find a 90 degree 
one of these though to more cleanly get me back towards the engine. Otherwise I could try to do some thing where I slant, slant them down and run the oil lines underneath the exhaust. Um, I may try that first, but this is the problem that I was afraid of compatibility with the RS3 exhaust is I put more things onto this bike, it becomes less clear with every installation whether it's going to be compatible. Any single piece I know will fit pretty well, but the more customization that happens, uh, the less likely is everything's going to be compatible. But that's hopefully some of the value that I bring to you guys watching these videos as you guys are doing the install to figure out what is and isn't compatible with these different pieces. All right, so I am going to try just to angle uh, the cables away from the exhaust first. What I'm going to try to do, you can see on this top one here, have the fitting come this direction. And if it's tight, something like this, it would give me just enough clearance. Um, it doesn't look like the hose is kinked, so I assume that that would be okay. And actually, let me show you. It actually wrap this way. So put some additional pressure on it. Still gets it pretty close. I think I could also look to zip tie the lines up here. So less than ideal, but I think it's what I'm gonna try out first. And then the second line would come potentially straight down here. Both of them would still be higher than my exhaust, so it shouldn't, you know, if I were to hear, hit something with low clearance, the exhaust here should hit before it hit these lines. So I've been trying different configurations of how I was gonna run the hose uh, for, for quite a while, and this is what I've finally settled upon. Because again, of where the placement is of the exhaust, it's not easy, it's not just a matter of coming straight out and uh, up here to the uh, cooler like, like you would without this exhaust. All right, it's been about a week or two since I installed the oil cooler on this, but I'm back to finish up um, a couple of things. So everything seems to be working well. Uh, this does bring the temps down. I've seen about 10 to 20 degrees difference in the maximum temperature that the engine's getting uh, now that I'm running this oil cooler. And again, that doesn't matter too much right now in the current configuration, but I'm setting this up because I'm planning on doing some big bore and other modifications that this will become more important. So I wanted to get this situated first. Uh, one thing though, while everything works right, I, I really don't like the way that the routing works and looks with the uh, oil hoses that I have. Again, because of this RS3 pipe, the fact that I can't just come uh, straight out, I kind of got to go to the left and the right of it. Everything again works and nothing's touching anything it shouldn't, but just aesthetically it doesn't look as good as I'd like. So what I have here are some AN3 fittings. I've got these 90 degree fittings that I'm going to use to have come straight back like this uh, so that both can route behind and then I've got the straight fittings that'll come and mount straight off of the oil cooler this way and then some PFTE braided line which I think also just aesthetically will look better
right, so I'm going to start by first trying to install uh, my new line to replace uh, this one on the right side and run the bike for a while, make sure everything works, and then I'll go ahead and make the other side. So just need to pull these two off. I believe they are 14 millimeter bolts, and I'm sure this one's going to drip some oil. This one may as well. So I'm going to put something underneath here. I have a coating on my garage floor, so if I do get some drips, it's not a big deal. And also, I bought new crush washers. As you replace this, you can't reuse the crush washers. They're one-time use, so make sure you have new crush washers if you're uh, doing this after you've done the original installation. And then these get torqued down to 15 Newton meters. All right, so I'm gonna run the bike for a while, uh, ride it around a bit, and make sure that I'm not getting any leaking out of uh, these fittings and assuming that's good I'm gonna go ahead and do the same with the rubber hose on the left side I've got both sides complete now and overall really happy with the way that it looks I rode it around for a while I'm not seeing any leaks um, I'll keep a close eye on it though over the next uh, hundred miles or so but I think everybody would agree that the routing of the stainless steel lines and the overall look uh, from them are much improved over the stock rubber hoses that come with the kit again particularly for me since I needed to route it around this RS3 exhaust and with these 90 degree fittings, it allows me to do that. So thank you everybody for watching. Please stay tuned for more videos.